On this episode of the Star Wars Time Show, Matt and Nick will sink their rotten teeth into the latest episode of The Bad Batch, Into the Breach, aka S3E13. Is young Nick still angry? How does he feel now about the show's direction? Did Matt's dopey face dig it, or does he have concerns about this series sticking the finale? Stick around to find out what's in store for the final two episodes of The Badge. If you need a little not Star Wars, Matt will also review the new Civil War movie, which feels way more real than it should. Of course, the show will end with the question of the week responses and the latest round of top five Star Wars fan artist features. Punch it, Chewie. Ads deal. All right, here we go. Hey, now, everybody, welcome back to the SWTS. Woohoo! We made it another week, my friends. You might have thought after <laughs> last week, Nick would take all of his Star Wars stuff outside and light it on fire, but he did not. Just the back. animated stuff. Right. He, he, he's had enough. <laughs> he has created. Remember, he's from Louisiana, down the bayou. So he called up his voodoo buddies, and he has now created voodoo dolls for Brad Rao and Jennifer Corbin. Okay? The, mm-hmm. the, the writing team, the creatives behind Bad Batch. And he may be commissioning a Dave Filoni voodoo doll, too. So just got to watch out for that. But he, he's here. <laughs> I, I coaxed him out of retirement. He's back. And I don't think he's ready to flamethrow, although that was very interesting last week because you don't usually get that type of stuff out of young Nick. And it was new. It, it, it took me aback a little bit. I'm like, whoa, whoa. But I, uh, you know, you got to appreciate someone's honesty. Like he said last week, he's not going to shit on stuff to shit on it like most angry Star Wars fans do. <laughs> but he, he's tired of playing the game. All right. He's tired of, you know, trying to trying to make uh, polished turds, if you will. Yeah. So he's here to lay down the gospel of Nick when he feels it is time <laughs> to dress something down, right, Nick? Yeah, just I just at this point I just have to call it how I see it, you know. And I always <laughs> try to do that. I always just try to call things how I see it. Um, it, but I do think that like because I'm such a huge Star Wars fan, like sometimes I go a little bit easier on things on the Star Wars side, and I just I just have gotten to the point to where it's like if the content's just not good then i'm just gonna say it's not good yo and you know what nick we can appreciate that because it's not like you say it's not good like an idiot right i mean he's not out here screaming though it's woke that's why i hate it or there's black people or kathleen kennedy is satan he has he has valid points so you know i uh, again kudos to young nick but it definitely caught me off guard i'm like oh my god I don't know if I can handle two negative people in the same uh, same <laughs> podcast for two two and a half hours every week, man. We we gotta share that negativity. Uh, I don't think it's gonna go that way this week because well, you know while we both kind of pre chatted, we do our pre game here about uh, Bat Batch S three E thirteen into the breach. Um, I, I you know we're we're a little, little much softer on this one, uh, but I, I also wouldn't say it was anything to write home about. And obviously we will get that. To that in our tried and true SWTS breakdown of new Star Wars content coming down the pipe. So that's your tease here. But first, we got a little pop culture to get into this week, Nick. And please, by all means, those of you in the chat, we love you. If you want to join the live streams, we we would appreciate it. The the more the merrier. We want the masses. Wednesdays, 5 p.m. East, YouTube.com slash Star Wars Time Show. Get in there with J.R.O., Bango, B-Mad, Nova, Bat, Johnny. Mm -hmm. The regulars have a good time, talk some shit. You never know what's going to go down in the SWTS live stream comment section. But here's the deal. I really want to hit the questions to us now Do it. In- instead of at the end. All right. So we're going to pause on pop culture. We're going to get right to the questions, pop culture. Then it'll be bad batch time. So hang loose, hang tight. We'll get there. But first... Let's hear what the fans want to know from Matt and Nick. All right. So I've got that. That's our top secret chat. We don't want anyone to see that. Okay, there we go. 
All right, the first one here, Nick, I have a feeling I might have to take on my own, although yeah. I would like any, even if you haven't seen it, be one of those people that hasn't seen something, but still talk shit about it, because that's always <laughs> fun. But. I, I, so you can give your, your okay. opinion first. I have only seen two episodes Got you. of the first season of this series, and that out. was enough for me. All right, perfect. <laughs> so you, you could comment a little bit. A little All right, bit. so this this comes from Bango. It's a big one, so, so spare me some time here. What did you think about the second season of Halo? My buddy, a huge Halo guy, tapped out of season two halfway through. Nick, I'm much more forgiving and accepted that it's basically an alt universe Halo, and that's and that they're playing pretty fast and loose with plot elements and characters from the games and books. I'm actually interested in seeing season three now that spoiler. I mean, this is months old, by the way. We're finally on the ring. Did you despise it? Kind of like it, love it. Okay, so here's my take. I have watched both full seasons. Um, I'm in full agreement with with. Kevin, in that I, I do not understand the alt universe approach whatsoever. Halo has a rich backstory, both from books and the fucking game itself. So I've never understood the choice to let's just reinvent something new that is not as good as the stories that came before it. Uh, I, 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 my reasonings for why they did that, they wanted to make Master Chief a real person. And it, 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 they didn't want to have him just a, a, a walking tank that never talks. That would not make for an interesting lead character. So for some reason, they felt the lead to completely change his team that he grew up with, which, again, makes no sense. Even if you want to take his helmet off, why does he have to be not on his team with Fred and those motherfuckers? OK, that's weird. And then they kind of give him like this quasi love interest, human covenant spy chick thread and here's the deal like the the alt universe take is not nearly as good as what's in the books ghost of onyx the fall of reach and then obviously halo combat evolved it's, it's not even close but i will say it is a spielberg production so it's high quality i think it looks fucking great it, it's actually a shame they didn't follow the canon because i think for the first time in forever gamers everyone would be like holy shit this is exactly what we thought live action halo would look like because that this series has that going for it in spades but overall do i despise it no i'd say i'm more i kind of like it i can't love it because of just the odd changes they took to get them as kevin said to the ring so yes i'll be watching season three because we know even more about what should be happening now and clearly it's not going to go that way because i mean the fucking arbiter is already dead okay it's like okay the arbiter is pretty fucking important but all right in the au <laughs> halo he's gone so there you go kevin i i i like it don't love it we'll stick with it if it has made enough money to keep getting new seasons go ahead nick um so I, I just want to preface this by saying that like while I played the Halo games up to four, like I played one through four, um, not five. Is there even a sixth one out? Is there a sixth um, game? In, I'm not sure. Infinity, sort of, even oh, though it Yeah, I, I played Infinity for about probably four or five hours, or maybe more than that, but it was like eh, it was okay. Um here's what I'll say. I, I agree fully with Matt's take. Like as as somebody who does who's not like deeply in the Halo lore and wasn't like a, a diehard fan of it when I played it, because mostly when I played that game, I was playing through with my friends. Like I didn't like I played through the story as like a as like co op missions and stuff like that with my friends. Never really played the first three alone. The fourth one I did play alone. Um, I, I thought it was like, I, I completely agree with Matt though, that like the divergence from the story elements of Halo just made no sense. Um, I thought that in the couple episodes that I watched that it was like, it was visually fine, but like, it was just, I thought the story was bad and I just don't understand why they chose to take it in that direction. In my opinion, if you were going to do that, it would have just been better to make a reach See series like just make it Halo Reach and not have Master Chief as your main character. Just have like just have it be about the Spartans and about the war against the Covenant and about like 
the whole ethos of what Halo is and not focus on Master Chief as a main character because I still do think that that could have like that could have been an interesting way to introduce Halo to like an outside audience is through the overarching story and not necessarily through Master Chief himself. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I have no intention of watching that show again just because like I don't really have an investment in the franchise. Like I never read any of the books. I don't have any intention of playing any other Halo games if they come out. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was like it was it was just kind of baffling the decisions that they made early on in that series. And it, I'm actually surprised that it's still running. Like I didn't even know that people still watch that show. Steven so. Spielberg has deep pockets. It's ambling, bro. I mean, it ain't oh, going well, anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the crazy thing is I believe Frank from whatever one, one, three or three, four, three, the original studio did halo. He's on the fucking Bungie. show team. <laughs> Bungie was the original. Like Bald Frank. If you're a Halo guy, you know who I'm talking about. I actually, one of the coolest things I got to do when I got into gaming media was sit down with these people, him and Bonnie, and, and talk about Halo. Because Halo, to me, honestly, people, it, it was approaching Star Wars level of passion for me. Halo came out, what was it, 99 or 2000? So I was a... First Xbox, so I think it yeah, was... 2000. 2000, yeah. Yeah, I so I was, I was 20 like prime for a game like 2001, that. It, 2001. There we go. 21. So I was a sophomore or junior in college. So I was prime for that universe, that game, the multiplayer, legendary solos, legendary co-op runs. I mean, it, it became a part of my life. Halo and the Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 4. And then sadly, Halo 5, in my opinion, derailed a masterful science fiction space marine story. It, it just, it, it fucked it up. I mean, we had a perfect first trilogy. Halo 4 started off very interesting with, the, yeah, you know. I, was, I agree. That, I that agree. you know, the, the, the learning about. And, yeah, the forerunners and, and the shit they were doing, the humans. And, and, and then we come to Halo 5 because they had the deal with Cortana essentially breaking down. And it just took a really weird turn, which then led into Halo Infinity, which also didn't really have a great story. And sadly, I, I feel like this, this, uh, the, the dual trilogies of Halo ended up crumbling after, you know, some of the events of Halo Five. But very it, much it, like Star Wars, the yeah. first trilogy was good, the second trilogy <laughs> was not good. <laughs> yeah, so. and um, and the crazy thing is, Nick, like I, I, I was so into Halo, I even read words and shit. Yeah, I mean, no, I remember you I, saying, I, I, yeah. like like Ghost Protocol or whatever it is, Ghost of Onyx, the Fall of I, all that shit I read. And they were great books. And it's like, well, I guess this is where, you know, you have Star Wars fans with Disney going, what? <laughs> right? I mean, like, it's honestly a very similar circumstance. Because oh, hold on, did... B-Mad. What up, B-Mad? Thank <laughs> you, brother. Dropping that nine ninety nine. dollars Glad to make the live stream. Halo show has made me very disappointed as a kid who grew up <laughs> playing the game, including Halo Reach and ODST. They should have done what Max did with TLOU. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so with hindsight. Because uh, yeah. I, I remember, man, they were flipping about it, too. They're like, oh, fuck you. We're not doing the story. It's like, w why? <laughs> why? Yeah, I, it's it's just so questionable, you know? It's not like I understand Ooh. that there's a perception that because the first game was so popular, like it was a revolution. Like it was it is what made console shooters what they are today. You know, oh, 100%. And, and like, I mean, you, Nick, you could argue it's what has allowed gaming to turn into a, a sport almost. I mean, yeah, I know, yeah. I know Counter Strike and those PC Counter, leagues yeah. existed, but until you brought in all us console bros, us mouth breathers, you didn't have a base for, for leagues, for professional tournaments. So you are right. I mean, Halo game changer completely. Yeah. It put, it put and, Microsoft on the fucking map. It did like that, like that franchise, the first, actually just the first game basically ensured that Xbox would be around through the end of the Xbox 360 era. Like that, that one game was the, the security that Microsoft needed to scale their video game business. Um, and I feel like there may have been some apprehension from the studio, like the, the movie or TV studio side from Paramount and Amblin to be like, well, too many people already know the story, so Who you don't gives need a to. Shit? 
But, so like, I don't know, but I, I do agree with BMAD that just if they just would have made the first game, the show, like the first season or the first two seasons, where however long you needed to do it, it would have been better. Like, I just don't understand the, the, because then you're, you're immediately alienating your core audience. Yes. And, and the core audience is, is who helps the secondary audience, the broader audience, buy into it. That's what I was going to say. You lose that megaphone, Nick. You lose bozos like you and me yeah. taking time out of their fucking day to bark onto the internet about something that gets us no recognition or money in return. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not on the internet, even if it's like me talking to my friend who's never played Halo and I watched the series and it's, it, it's good. Like they made it after the first game. I'd be like, Hey, I know you didn't play this game, but like this show is awesome. You should check it out. Sci-fi show. Really cool. Like I'm not going to do that now because I didn't like, because the first few episodes and like the story is not in line with what I played. So right. like, it's not even like big voices. It's just like word of mouth stuff you lose because you don't, you, you didn't stay true to the story. So it was an odd decision for sure. Yeah, so hey, it is what it is. Like I said, I'm, I'm I, I just, it, it's pretty evident, and I'm not a brain dead human, al although I may play one on the internet. But when it comes to fake shit, especially science fiction, I do think my brain gets a little soft. I mean, I, I can accept a lot of shit and just be like, hey, yeah, whatever. It's, hey, it's fine. It, it, it entertained me for 45 minutes to an hour. I don't know if that's because, you know, all the, all the medicine I take at night, maybe that mm -hmm. softens me up on it. I'm sure that helps. But, uh, you know, just like Star Wars, even last week, not a great episode, but it's nothing I'm ever going to let like really uh, piss me off or get me upset. In the end, it was still new Star Wars and it made me smile maybe once or twice, frustrated me a little bit with some narrative choices. But like I said, when it, I have so much hate and anger for everything else in life that I just, I can't, I don't have the capacity to bring it to the fake shit, if that makes sense. So, all right. Good, good question there. Uh, Bango. What do we got next? I like this. This kind of warms us up here. All right. Yeah. Johnny Osage. <laughs> do you think Lucasfilms should chat GPT all SW content for accurate story <laughs> development? I mean, <laughs> the story group, yes. I mean, because they, they don't know what the hell's going on. They, these are the idiots that sanctioned the sequel trilogy narrative flow. So, um, chat may have helped them back then. If it, they, the prompt could have been, how do we not fuck up a trilogy and would say use the same writer throughout? So, that, yeah. that's my take. I So, my opinion on this. And I always love Johnny's takes because they, they're, you know, he gives us a little joke to work with. I, here's what I will say. ChatGPT would do a better job of cataloging all of the, like being able to catalog and reference all of the past canon. Easy. That actually, <laughs> I should, true. if I wasn't cheap, I should create a Star Wars GPT or a Star Wars Time Show GPT because then... It would just be all our content, all our data, all Star Wars shit. And yeah, right. we could just ask it like, hey, what did fuckface do in the old Republic era? And it'd be like, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And you see, because like that is what AI at this point is really good at, cataloging mm -hmm. and referencing. And that's how it really like does what it does because it can reference catalogs of information very quickly. So it would be good at, at being able to like outline what has happened in canon in that era and then help whoever's writing keep track of like, hey, this is something that we have to take into account and stuff like that. In terms of writing it, I don't think it would be that good because I have used um, ChatGPT and Google Gemini for like actual writing prompts before. And it's just like, it's not quite there yet. So I don't, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's at that level yet. But it, I, I think it, like, in a, I mean, honestly, in a real way, it would be a help yeah. to people writing. And, and depending on your level of prompt skills and if you're paying for AI or not, you, yeah. I, you can do some pretty amazing shit. Like, you can. I, yeah. I'm trying to become pretty proficient at prompt writing, and it, it's a lot of effort. Like, it, 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 you do have to learn how to do it. Yes, you could just say, hey, can you do this or make this? And it, it might work. 
But if you apply this thing, and here comes the professor and me, the, the RACF framework, Nick, and you give it a role in action, context, examples, and format, you're going to get pretty much exactly what you're looking for, maybe even better. Um, yeah. Bat threw a comment up here that's from a past discussion, but I want to address it here, saying, I don't know how much time I wasted playing Halo and Gears. It's not time wasted, my friend. I, I can tell you right now, those are fun for you. <laughs> some of my most fond memories. I, I would say from, I think Gears came out when I was 25, right? 2005, 2006. Somewhere around there, yeah. Gears 1, I met, you know, you might see him sometimes in this chat. He shows up, Perfected Chaos over there in, in Portsmouth, England. I met a lot of dudes from overseas. And we bonded so well that in 2013, when the Steelers were playing there, I went over to hang out with these people. Like that's every night as we worked our way towards what was it called? Seriously, 10,000 individual ranked multiplayer kills. And then Gears 2 and then it's 3. Yeah, I mean, I'll never look at that as time wasted. I actually look I look back on those days very fondly and and I miss them. But then got older, kids uh gamers started having families and kids. The youngins started to get more toxic and tw fast twitchy on the controller and just like, all right, mm -hmm. fuck this. <laughs> I am retired from online gaming. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I don't think that that's a waste of time either, but because uh, I didn't, while I didn't put my time heavily into Halo or Gears, I did play Counter-Strike professionally yeah, I remember, yeah, at yeah, that you were time. <laughs> hardcore like PC yeah. guy. I mean, I, I play, I literally played Counter-Strike professionally before like, there it, was it was a thing be, yeah before like professional yeah. gaming was like huge like so, I, so here's like what can, i'd recommend <laughs> quit so. quit wasting your time on star wars time and get back to being a professional gamer Dude, <laughs> you know it's funny like the people like the guys that i that was on like were on my team like because it's a team of five when you play counter-strike right. that like they've reached out to me before and they were like hey man let's play again let's play again and i just like can't I do just it. don't really play first person shooters on PC anymore. You like would I, probably have to practice for what, a month or two just oh, to get maps and movements down again? Oh, 100%. Like, I, um, one of my friends that I used to work with here in Austin, um, I saw him on Steam the other day playing Counter Strike 2, and I was like, <laughs> dude, I just can't do it. Like, because, <laughs> if, and for me, it is more of, I had one, I haven't played it in a long time. And two, like I know what my skill level used to be. It'd like be I was I was literally yeah. a professional level player. And now it's just gone. Like it's just like those fat like you said, those fast twitch movements. I haven't played any of the new maps. I didn't even really play Counter Strike Global Offensive, which was the game that was before Counter Strike Two, so like it's just and you were hard. pure WASD oh, fucking yeah. hotkey motherfucking mouse mm -hmm. guy too, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, keyboard mouse. Hate like, that shit. This was back in the day before they had wireless headphones, so I had like five point one surround sound headphones that I had Hell to yeah. buy a sound card <laughs> for my PC to use, so I could hear the directional steps of where everybody was coming from on the map. Yeah, like, see, that's pro level we, shit. He ain't yeah, screwing like, around. We would sit there like, this is how it would go. Like I was still in school or in like, I had a part-time job. So like I would either go to school and I would come home and I would scrim for as long as I could, or I would go to work and I would come home and I would, we would scrim for as long. We would, we would have like six hour scrim days where like we wouldn't stop playing until 2 AM. And then I have to go to work in the morning and stuff. And like, it was, it was an amazingly fun time. And like to see how fast our team progressed and like all of the, you know, like, you know, like working our way through the rankings and stuff was super fun. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, it's like, dude, you just, you're, you're washing waves of nostalgia. I mean, it's like, man, it, it literally has been over well over a decade since I've, I've had gaming moments like that. Even, even when the, the main group broke away, stunt guy and I still committed like every, every Friday after I'd get all shit faced and then do the early versions of the Star Wars time show with Nick. <laughs> Oh yeah, we we should just start. I, I should run some of those through uh, Opus and see what <laughs> see what it finds. Because holy shit, I'd probably get arrested. Those were funny. Those I, I can't even remember. Like I used to say, just yeah. some of the most inflammatory shit back then. Because we didn't live stream. I just recorded yeah. it, and I would I would always be ripped. I mean, I I would roll out a B Dub's happy hour on a Friday night after drinking half a gallon of Coors Light, and uh, you know I was ready to rock. So uh, good times. <laughs> All right, I think we got one more here. Yeah, I think we got one more. We got right. one more. 
what is best in life? And this I know is from this is. 2797. I, I did not have time to pregame this, Nick, it's, to take. It's it's from uh, Conan, the Barbarian. It's uh, what is best in life? It, and he's like, the to, to to hear the or to like see your bet your enemies fall on the battlefield to hear the lamentations of their women and something else i can't remember exactly the line but that's what it's from right. conan the barbarian. nice <laughs> nice bad i guess what is best in life to me i, I don't know I, I guess my sanity how's that <laughs> <laughs> in yeah, yeah. sanity man it's um it's it's funny you know i you know i sometimes might reveal too much about my personal life, but I have been going to, to, to see someone. It's, it's helped a little bit. And I actually, Nick, I actually brought up my obsession with, with Star Wars and the need to always make content, even even though no one gives a shit. And he explained to me why, and it made complete sense. He, he still hasn't convinced me that I can stop it, but we're, we're at least getting somewhere. Let, let's hey, just you're say, making uh, progress. Yeah, making I, progress. I am someone that needs a lot of recognition for various reasons. I need my, as they tell the little ones these days, I constantly need my bucket filled because <laughs> this motherfucker's <laughs> got a leak in the bottom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hey, we'll, we'll see. Maybe this time in a year, I'll be sitting here floating in my seat, fucking zenned out. Yeah, like man. Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. So you never that's know. That's the that's the goal. That's the but goal, if um right? <laughs> you are a man out there and this is something like you've been you think is gonna make you a pussy, uh, it took me a long time to get here. I mean, I've been listening to Howard since I was fifteen, back when he was pretty nutty. And then I remember in his forties he he finally went and got help, and I've seen kind of what it's done for him over the past thirty years and what it's changed him into. And I was like, you know what? It's time to Time to make a step here, pal, because you're you're going to die from the shit that you do to yourself and how crazy you make yourself feel. So that's been fun. Um, yeah, I, mean, I look at Tony it, Soprano. Tony Soprano exactly. benefited from it, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I do think it's going to help me maybe start to disassociate my direct happiness with making Star Wars content, which is that, a goal. Yeah, of mine. I think that's kind of what I've always tried to push you towards is like right. if you enjoy making the content then continue to do it obviously but if you don't enjoy like that process then you shouldn't do it yeah, it's, like, it's it's very weird because I, I i don't know how to explain it i mean i do like enjoy you, i enjoy the process i don't enjoy enjoy the reception yeah or, or yeah, the, the it, lack yeah. of reception yeah, or the, reaction yeah so it, and, it makes the process less enjoyable. So it's, it's a vicious cycle. It's like I love doing it, but I don't love doing it for no reason, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I mean, like if there even if the reason is just like, hey, I I put out a piece of content to put my opinions out there and then boom, that's it. And what yeah. comes after is is a separate thing that does not have to affect your happiness. It's just like, I, I mean, I, I love that Nick found this opus thing, but it, it's become... An obsession, a, bl a black cloud in my life that I, I almost need to get rid of. It, it just, I went from, you know, we do the show and then I, you could kind of do some things. But now it's literally, I do the show and just try to make clips for the next six days until the new show. See, and that's it's, why it's, like, it's insanity. <laughs> like I should have just my, let Nick keep running with it. Cause he did it whenever the fuck he felt like it. And he's like, Hey, whatever, here you go. <laughs> I th yeah. I think the intention of that was to make it easier, but I think like, you are just, you're also a person that just kind of has an obsessive personality. Oh, when, oh, like, yeah. something I'm, I'm driven. Like I, yeah. uh, when it comes down to it, I can't read the room. I mean, it's clear that we are never going to kind of go grow beyond what we are, which is fine, I guess. But I also am like, well, maybe one, one more video might be the one that might be the one, but I, I'm getting closer to cutting that out. So I've, I've, I've made a promise to myself. If I don't, if I hadn't stopped doing the daily real features on IG, by our year anniversary of our old account getting nuked, I'm going to stop then. So I'm committing that right now. I yeah. know no one's going to give a shit because it's not like anyone outside of our homies from that community actually listen, but I, I, I got to cut that out. And I think I'm going to start with the, the daily reels, cutting that out and then maybe start going from there. You never know. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll tune in Wednesday and our happy asses won't even be here. So <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you have to, yeah, you just have to figure out how, your time is best served in that particular moment. Like sometimes it's like, hey, this will take me an hour, but what else could I do with that hour? I could hang right. out with my kid. 
I could go on a walk. Thank you. I could I could work play, out. I don't know. Play video games again. You could play video that, games. That'd be nice. I, I really love Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Uh, practice the guitar. Give myself finger calluses with my, my new finger trainer. Yeah. So yeah. And, and yeah, I, I think that's like that's kind of like for any of you out there who are listening to us and who do content creation of your own or thinking about doing it. And I've told this to Taylor too because she has her own podcast now. Don't get into content creation with the expectation of it making any money. This is if you're going to get into content creation, you should do it because you like to do it and you like the things that you're talking about, regardless of what it is, whether it's about Star Wars, whether it's about, you know, uh, architecture or whatever you're passionate about. Don't like don't do something because you're like, oh, I can get rich from this. Like do it because Yo, you, yeah. you genuinely I, enjoy it. Listen, and here's the crazy thing. I've never done this to make money. I only do this to scratch my fucking ego. Like all I, again, Nick, it's, I need love, man. That, that's the only reason yeah. I'm doing I just want people to, to be like, Matt, you're doing a good job, boy. I wonder why I need all that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. Oh, well, we'll move on from the therapy session, but yeah, I want to talk about it a bit more to make it a little more uh standardized for some of the men out there that might still think you're a, a failure and you ha you grew a pussy if you go talk to someone about your jacked up head all right i think we uh yeah we hit the question so that was cool i like yeah. that we just gotta remember to do it uh this time every show all right so let's switch gears back over to pop culture time and a little civil war review all right i um I think we were talking about this. Both were kind of interested in checking out. It's a new movie from Alex Garland coming out of A24. You know A24 is... They got a pretty damn good track record these days when it comes to the movies they're, they're producing and putting out there. And um, I, I have to say, I was really pleased with this movie. I was going in thinking it was going to be very obvious what the factions were representing in real life. And they do keep it pretty murky uh, by the way before i get any, any further if we get cut off there's a tornado blowing through town right now oh, and i can <laughs> hear the hail smashing into my skylights upstairs so just beware we may be losing power at some point in time um all right stay so safe anyways, stay safe brother. jesus at least dude. you're in the basement already <laughs> bro ohio not really known as Tornado Alley. We have had more tornadoes than Tornado Alley already this year. So Shit is climate change is definitely crazy. fake. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, back to Civil War. So so like I said, if you've seen the trailers for this, you, you probably go in and you're like, all right, well, it's very clear this is going to be this side and this is going to be this side. And, and I went in and I really appreciate how Alex handled that. There's, He doesn't even name the president. Uh, they they make it very clear that the president is a fascist. So, you know, if you want to kind of line it up to real life, it's not too hard. Um, but really, the, all they tell you is like the guy has been in office for, for three years. There's now this Western Front, the, the Florida Alliance and the Loyalist States kind of warring across the, the, the country. But the, the good guys, the Western Front of California and Texas are, are closing in on the Capitol. And you kind of get keyed into the story through... Uh, war reporters uh what's her name Kristen. Kristen dunst Kristen, Kristen dunst. dunst is like you know she's a famous war photographer she's got a reporter guy they they, they pick up a noob photographer on the way and and whatever and the, 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 their journey is to make it to dc to try and interview the president before dc falls and it's a, a very interesting tour throughout the you know, the Upper East here. And you, you kind of see some shit where you're like, yeah, I I could see how our country could go this way. And yeah, this is scary. And I understand why these people are doing this. And holy shit, what if this really does happen? I don't want to live here anymore. So it, it checked a lot of boxes. But I most appreciate the fact that it just wasn't, these are the Democrats. These are the Republicans. It was... <laughs> I think you'll figure it out depending on the factions they come across, but it, it, it wasn't in your face. So I would say you could go in regardless of your political beliefs. Hopefully you're on the, the right side of things, but um, it's good. It is. It's something my wife and I, we, we just walked out. We're like, we looked at her like that was really good, but disturbing. 
because I, I do not think that this is a reality that is that far off, depending on how this election goes. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to go see it, <laughs> because it's like I live this shit every day. Like I have to see it across my screens. I have to see it in my real life. It, and like, I don't need a movie to tell me that this country's fucked up. I already know. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I see some things are going around. Like they're asking Alex. He's like, "Is this responsible or not?" He's like, "I truly don't know how to answer that." And yeah, I um, like I, I, don't I just know. don't I, see the benefit in a movie right. like that. At least in terms of like me consuming it. Got you. Because like my media consumption that I like this is the way that I handle my media consumption now. Is that like I am only going to watch something if it's going to make me like if, if it is something that I can enjoy on a on a scale of like this is really fun and it makes me happy. If something makes me depressed to watch it, I'm just not going to watch it because like there's enough things in like r the real world that depress me that I don't need to consume media that also depresses yeah, me. Yeah, it's a very fair <laughs> statement in today's landscape. The only thing I would caution to people thinking like Nick, we can't keep our heads buried. Oh, dude, I'm of, moving out of this country. Okay, like, I'm just I, saying I'm there, there, here there's a lot of people that <laughs> that ignore stuff and then they, they, they'll believe anything. So oh, yeah. even if I, I fully understand what Nick is saying, but, it, but at least make sure you still understand factually Every day, what is what's happening here, and and what side's saying what? That's all else. Oh yeah, like <laughs> I, I think that like Taylor and I, like to be completely honest, if we didn't have our pets, we would not be in the United States right now. Well, you, like, we would have. You can go already. right to Italy, right? Because her her family lives there. Well, they're not. Well, they're not Italian citizens or anything like that. They are like their station. They're they're there on a military like okay. visa basis. Right. I mean, like I. But now Italy has opened up their nomad visa, which allows people who work like who have jobs in other countries to go live there. And you don't have to have a job in that country. Um, so like that's available. Like there's a lot of countries have nomad visas for people like me and Taylor who work fully f like, you know, remote and have full time jobs. Um, but like we were going to like we were ready to move to Vancouver, Canada. And like the only thing that really like put a halt to us doing that is because it would be so hard to travel with the animals. Uh, like my cat is 10 years old, like she's getting up there and like we would literally be going from Texas to to fucking Canada, which is a really far way. Like we've all also talked about like going to like a Scandinavian country, there you go. like going to either like Sweden or Greenland. Norway or somewhere <laughs> like, you know, somewhere like that. Uh, Berlin was another place that we talked about going to. Yeah, that's um, that's starting yeah, to get I mean, a little like, close to Russia, man. You might want to like some people are like, yeah, I might go <laughs> yeah. to Europe. I like I don't know about Europe either, because because we we're not paying for Ukraine anymore, so he's he's making his way uh, west. Um, yeah. So I but like I know that there are a lot of people that are like this is where I was born and this is where I'm gonna stay, but like a place is a place, like like the only thing that attaches you to a place is the people that are in that place. And I, I truly believe that like national pride, nationalism is just something that is ingrained into a child, like when they're in school and by, by their surroundings. But like, if a place isn't serving you anymore, then you shouldn't feel like you're obligated to stay there. It, you know, this like, is sure not looking like the, the America that I was taught about in the eighties. That That's for damn sure. Cause a lot of people now think Russia is awesome and Putin is the man. It's like Russia yeah, has been well, <laughs> bad since World War II. There's actually a great new documentary on Netflix about the Cold War. Watch it. Learn something. Because I know we don't teach motherfuckers shit anymore in K through 12 about real history. So get to it. All right. Let, let's move on from that type of shit. Civil War, if you can handle it, highly enjoy it. This is just a quick hit because it's old, but I finally got to it. The gentleman on Netflix is fucking tits. It's awesome. It, it's it's definitely related to the movie with McConaughey. It's you know the same concept that essentially uh, weed dealers are using Lord's property to grow weed on because the 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 aristocrats are poor, cash poor at least over there. 
Um, but obviously, this is a series. It's got a loaded cast. You know, uh, Jean Carlo's in there. Uh, I forget the name of the of the lead guy. What's his name? Theo Vaughn, I believe. There's some hot girl in here. I forget her name because I'm a piece of shit. But <laughs> it's if you like Guy Ritchie and his style, you, you'll love it. It's just it's got that great Guy Ritchie humor, the way he shoots it, the way he tells a story. It's 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 vintage Ritchie. I love it. If you've been considering it, I give it a stamp of approval. All right. Nice. Um, yeah, JRO giving me fingertips here for fingering a guitar. I saw that. And I tried to I do it, Nick. And I, was, I wish you could. You might be able to see it on camera, but I can do I that. Can, like alternate lifting. If your I fingers. lift my pinky, I can do that. If I try to lift my ring finger, it's nearly impossible. Like. I have to really focus yeah. to do that. I can do that. And that may be just from me, like using a mouse, like my right hand was like, is my mouse yeah, hand yeah. and like playing. Well, yeah, I, know, I need my, my left games. hand because that, that's my <laughs> fret hand. You know what I mean? So it's like my right is my my strummer. It's the left I'm trying to, to break. I mean, you pretty much have to break your hand. You have to grow stupid muscles in it. And, and somehow yeah. get shitty fingers to extend further than they should. It's not like I got massive hands. I mean, I'm a fairly little guy. I mean, I don't have like an extremely small weenie, but my hands also aren't, I'm not, you know, palming basketballs or anything. Oh, well, it's fun. I'm going to keep doing it. Although I hope I do not ruin it like every other hobby and make it work to where I hate it every night. So we'll see. Um, but I am enjoying beating the shit out of my fingers. <laughs> um oh yeah one last point on the gentleman from bango here saying i loved the subdued vinnie jones ha 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 used to him being a maniac that is that is correct remember the guy that played juggernaut in the shitty x-men last stand i mean Vin, vinnie's yeah, in yeah. a lot of i think a lot of the guy richie stuff and he always is yeah, like the, is, the big yeah. thug crazy guy but now he's he's almost like the the butler for this rich family and it's it's a great role for him fine okay <laughs> Um, Ubisoft story here, and just just real quick. I mean, I, I we'll let Nick comment on this too. But uh, earlier in the week, over in our Discord, if you want to join, it is open. I think the open link is easily found on Instagram at Star Wars Time dot show. Just check that out in the bio link. Uh, but a lot of people were getting their panties in a bunch this week, Nick, because you know they're reading the fine print on the Star Wars Outlaws multiple different pay tiers. And they noticed, they're like, hey, uh, they're, in the season pass, they, they, they mention a, a, an expansion, some DLC, and the mission's called Jabba's Gambit. That must mean we don't even get to play Jabba unless we pay for the season pass. Light it on fire. <laughs> All right. So here's the real deal. And this goes back to please practice media literacy across all genres, be it politics, games, stupid news, real news. While, yes, they are gating one of the job emissions behind the season pass, if you remember from last week, Job of the Hut and the Hut Cartel are one of the four main syndicates. So you are most definitely going to interact with the Job of the Hut and the Huts in the base game. Uh, to clarify, yep. this comes from whoever, some asshole at Ubisoft. To clarify, Job of the Hut and the Hut Cartel are one of the main syndicates in Star Wars Outlaws and will be part of the experience for everyone who purchases the game, regardless of edition. The Jabba's Gambit mission is an optional additional mission with the Hut Cartel along Kay and Nix's journey across the Outer Rim. This mission will be available to those who purchase a season pass or an addition to the game, which includes the season pass. All right, so there you go. Again, yeah. listen, I we don't love the price points. Like Nick's not wrong when he's about ready to just start punching faces. But my point is, let's get better at reading. That's it. Let's don't yeah. let people trigger you for no reason. All right, go ahead, Nick. Yeah. So obviously, you will still be able to interact with Jabba in the game. My issue is is just with like Ubisoft. It's not even with this game. It's just like Ubisoft's business model as a whole has penetrated the greater gaming landscape for for lack of a better term because they're really the ones that started with all this nickel and diming bullshit and dlcs and like and they're continuing to do it almost to an exploitative degree if i'm being completely honest with you and it really sucks as a consumer to be like 
oh, well, I have to pre-order it now or I can't play this thing. <laughs> Me. It's like, or I can't, like, well, you know, like, this is a really cool mission, but I have to pay 40 extra dollars to play it? Like, why? I'm already paying. Used to be a price like, of probably, video games, right? And they yeah, I mean, like, I, I do remember it when it was like, oh, yeah, brand new games, forty nine ninety nine, And it was like, OK, fucking fantastic. I mean, it was even lower than that in some cases. But, um, yeah, I mean, Ubisoft has always been really bad with their their price gouging and nickel and diming and all this shit. Like, it's just a part of their ethos and a part of their 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 business model that is just kind of disgusting. And I know that, like, I know that the cost of, of making games is high, but the cost of making games is actually de has actually probably flattened out recently. Um, and we're just not seeing that happen in terms of the pricing of the of the games to follow, especially from like Ubisoft is also the the company that just put out this skull and bones game for fucking I think it was sixty nine ninety nine or 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 like e maybe even seventy nine ninety nine. That was like trash, and they were like, "Well, this is the first quadruple A game that's ever been made." What and does I was that like, even mean? You, you, yeah, it and like, and Skull and Bones is basically just a rip off of Sea of Thieves, except you can't get off your fucking boat. <laughs> like, what? what so I, I'm like, like, what? Really, quad A is becoming a thing. What, what does that even? Dude, I, does that just mean like, they can charge you over a hundred dollars now? And, and you're just like, Dude, oh, it's, it's, it's quad crazy. A. So, yeah, it's got to be at least three figures. Yeah, what, I mean. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just Ubisoft. That's just Ubisoft's bullshit, I mean, listen, dude. It's, it's capitalism. It's called greedflation. If they can make it, they're going to make it, right? And if we're yeah. going to buy it and, and they're going to keep raising the prices, that, that's just it's common yeah. sense. So, But, yeah, for, the, for those of you who are not aware of the, the Ubisoft bullshit, like, this started way, way back. I'm talking, like, PS three days like when DLC was thing. first possible right. because prior to that you couldn't have DLC because consoles weren't connected to the internet and then as soon as that happened Ubisoft's like wait you're telling me that I can make a four hour long expansion to this game and charge people half the price that I did for the full game I'm doing it the thing is like, though DLC back then used to be mostly worthwhile worth I mean they, it was it was, it was good decent. shit like it really would kind of extend the game so there you go just a quick update on that before we get into bad batch time that's right people it's that time of the show for the SWTS tried and true never repeated breakdown of new Star Wars today we're tackling the bad batch season 3 episode 13 into the breach so uh as we always do we'll both kind of give our early thoughts starting with young nick ending with myself because you know if you are an swts or you may have already heard some of my early impressions from my full breakdown that you can catch now and i even put the word but on the thumbnail as in b-u-t-t -T. <laughs> how risque am i these days all right <laughs> nick so it was um I actually, I'm not even going to say anything. We, the, the floor is yours. Let us know what you thought right. of Into the Breach. Um, better than the last episode for sure, yep. with the caveat being uh -oh. <laughs> that this episode and the last episode should have been one hundred percent. And and like, yeah, I mean, we 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 talked uh, briefly before we went live on this, and we both agreed that like these two episodes just felt like they they would have worked better as mm -hmm. one. Um. I will say that, you know, the episode was was definitely focused on building tension towards this, like, you know, are they are they gonna be able to infiltrate this Imperial base? Are they gonna be able to make their way on this ship to then find their way to Tantus? Um but yeah, I, I do feel like it was a twenty one minute long episode, I believe. So it was it was a bit on the shorter end. And given the fact that we literally just pick up right where we left off from the last one, it does feel like it, the, these two episodes probably would have been better served oh, just yeah. being one. Um, I, I don't feel like if you, there was a lot that would have been missed if you would have combined them. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of quality of episode, I, I, I don't think it was bad. I still struggle to see how 
this was like you needed to break Rampart out of a jail to do this because it's not like people recognized him, right? Like it's like he he walked onto hey, the he, ship. He, and hey man, have imagined- I don't know if anyone could play that role better than that arrogant motherfucker though. He is one hell of a. He is the perfect imperial. But you're you're definitely but, right but, but about yes, that. But, but like, yes, it, it could have been you know Hunter's mom wearing yeah, an imperial anybody, garb. Like, so yeah, it didn't. you you give anybody a. A captain suit, right? <laughs> then they can walk just, in and fucking pull the it The rampart off. thing we shred that last week. I'm, I'm just, it, it is yeah. what it is. Like we can't fix it. They did it. It is stupid, but here he is. And I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, at the by the end of this episode, I'm like, hey, fuck it. Let's see where this goes now with rampart. Why the yeah. fuck not? It is, it is kind of getting interesting now. The way, the way he's kind of the 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 situation has been reversed on him, and he kind of has to work for clones versus clones working for him. Yeah, and it, it's funny to see this guy that love the empire I and mean, so much so he rose the ranks to vice admiral now being out of it and, and infiltrating it and fucking with it so that is yeah. while i still think it's an egregious error that he was kept alive i do i'm seeing some of the positives in in the in the moments he has with the clones uh, that and, is kind of funny yeah he, here's my only question how does nobody notice him this dude's face was literally plastered all over every hollow net, every like everywhere across the galaxy. Nick, Nick, when beards the are like first... having a whole new face, bro. <laughs> it's like getting, it's like Mission Impossible. It, they, they didn't even need to do the the plastic thing. You just grow a beard, you're automatically a different person. And it's like, and that was even before he was scapegoated. Like he was the face of the chain code program. Like go get yeah. your chain codes. He was His everywhere. His hollow image was broadcast on every planet. Yeah. And then, so you, you have that exposure and then you have the very public scapegoating of this dude yeah. where it's like, he's the bad guy. Rampart, you see his face. The guy that you saw his face all the time, he's the bad guy. Well, because you know, Star Wars C span <laughs> was running in the Senate chamber. You you know it was. I mean, you, you, they probably yeah. broadcast Senate sessions out to Dude, the galaxy. It, that was that was definitely on the Hollow yeah. Net. That he was the he was the guy who caused all of this strife. And then he, you're telling me that this dude who was the vice admiral and the face of the Imperial like the Imperial reach across yeah. the galaxy just walks back into an Imperial facility and nobody notices them. Like it was just such a weird, I was like, surely somebody's going to say like, Oh, Admiral Rampart. I thought that you, and then he would have to give some kind of excuse to like why he's not in prison or something like that. But it, it literally wasn't even hey, mentioned. A, as we so have like, identified okay, in the past, the Imperials are dumb as fuck. So much so that their yeah, biggest yeah. focus <laughs> is the budget and not galactic domination. So I guess we just got to chalk yeah. it up to that. Some may call it lazy writing, um, but it this is a very stupid empire as we've come t- to learn yeah. over the years here. So <laughs> yeah, so like that was that was my only thing. I was like, wait, <laughs> wait Lee, you're playing- I really don't remember this guy at all. It, well, I guess there there is that too. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, like, yeah, no, I mean, I guess so. But like Ramp- Rampart the was main villain the face- for about a season yeah, and a half. Like, yeah, and then also, I mean, like, but Rampart was also in, like, he was in Clone Wars. Like, he was in... I, no, he, he that, was new. He's new for Bad Batch. I I thought that he was the voice of, like, the, the Clone Wars intro or something like that. Oh, the but, guy? Uh, like, the, the actor? The voice actor? Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but Ram- the character himself yeah. is new for Bad Batch. That I can confirm that. I just ran it through my GPT in my head. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I agree with that. I, I mean, yeah, it was just it was just so hey, weird. You know, <laughs> in the end, like I said, stupid empire. Let's worry about the budget versus the important shit like Project Necromancer and just basic security on our imperial stations that happen to be right above the capital. Hey, you know who cares, right? So hey, if anything, Nick, we finally learn what that fucking space station's called, Imperial Station Zero Zero Three. So that was nice. All right. Go. Anyways, nice. my take on the episode, I, I'm kind of in line with Nick. I I found it to have the Star Wars suspense and tension that we all know and love. It it nailed that 100 percent start to finish. I think both threads utilize that that trope very well. Omega's thread with her, you know, planning her own Andor s breakout, snagging tools, getting the other kids to buy in after they had no hope. 
So I enjoyed that. And it'll get a little tense there with that one Dr. Scalder who, who, you know, she's starting to figure some things out here that, you know, maybe Dr. Carr isn't really doing what she should do as a chief scientist and that the kids probably shouldn't be mingling with Omega, who has spent years now training with Clone Force 99 on how to be a fucking badass. Um, but even, you know, when Omega's trying to pop the door and figure out their escape, is she going to get found out? All that stuff was great. And that just carries over into what the boys were doing. Uh, you know, all the fun stuff on the station with, with Rampart being a, an Imperial again. I really did like him kind of, you know, rooster walking all around that place. Like, oh, this feels good again. You know, uh, what, what do he say to the one? Do your thing, sir. You know, when they tell, hey, just do your thing. He's like, do your thing, sir. It's like, yeah. he's just such a prick, but you got to <laughs> love him. Uh, and then uh, the... The suspense for the Echo mission to get onto the shuttle, to time it up with Hunter, I, just expertly done. I, I really did love it, and I kind of got angry because we got to wait. And I, I can't necessarily get angry at the episode because there was a point in time where all humans had to wait at least a week to see what happened next in her TV show. I mean, a lot, I think a lot of us have forgotten that. We, we're, we get spoiled, and that's why we sometimes shit on these shorter episodes because we just want to see what happens next that's that's really where i think a lot of the anger comes from especially for me it's just like oh no don't turn it off come on like come on a little bit more a little bit more so i am definitely better than last week i would not say one of the highlights of the season but it it felt more in line with what i'm expecting to witness on a wednesday morning watching the bad batch uh, marched her way towards the series finale. I, I will tell you, Nick, I am knowing the runtime next week. I'm very concerned that if the finale isn't extended, there's, I don't think there's any way to satisfy the, the full fan base. N- not that that's ever going to happen in star Wars. I, I just, yeah. I, I, cause we have timing for next, next week's supposed to be 21 minutes. This week was 24 so next next week even shorter. Next week's episode is going to be eighteen minutes long. Do you realize Wait, that? I, I, we don't like know if that's with credits or whatnot. It, oh, with yeah, credits or not? That, okay, that's gotcha. from that cryptic HD dude who hits them all the time. So, it I'm I'm taking it for uh, uh, I'm taking it for verbatim. Like it's legit. Thank you, League. We we are proud of our accounting theory. You know, sometimes every once in a while <laughs> we say something funny on this show. I mean. What you just mentioned is my biggest critique of this show thus far is that the back half of this show after that two episode drop to me Screeched. feels like they they have not used their runtime no. well. Like and it would be di- like I would I would be singing a totally different tune if we didn't know that this was the last season, you know? Like we know and, and, and there's two more there's two left. Yeah, we just don't have a lot of time left. And I don't feel like that they have used their runtime of these episodes wisely to set up this ending well. Um, Because up to that, like, even through this episode, they still, like, like, they have just gotten to Yeah, I was going to say, man, this episode probably should have been a week or two ago. And in my opinion, in terms of pacing and then get a little more... We could start really because I how how are you going to handle in in twenty one minutes in unknown minutes? How are you going to handle Omega's breakout? Their rush to the base because I looked up remaining trailer scenes. All those jungle shits are clearly Tantus and them fighting mm-hmm. their way to the base. So that's going to be next week. Are are we are we get, how are we going to get to the the wolf resolution? How are we going to uh, get to the, I don't know, the clones at large resolution? Uh, is Bad Batch really going to cover the demise of the clones or is that going to be left open now? Is that going to be an open thread? I, I just don't know yeah. how they're going to do it. I, I, if the finale is 35 plus minutes, all right, I'll have a little yeah. confidence that it could be done. If it clocks in another, you know, 25-er, I'm going to be nervous as fuck man i I still think it's going to end well and i think the this season's plots will be wrapped up but a lot of the stuff us fans have been asking hey where's where the fuck's cody you know where where all these other clones by the time rebels comes around i I don't know how you address that with respectable intention yeah i i think like there's a lot of threads that are still open and and like 
just to be completely honest, like we don't know like what their plans are at Lucasfilm. Like we don't know if they have another animated series that's already locked and loaded and they're okay with leaving some of these threads open and then re-exploring them and whatever comes after. Like we obviously don't have any announcements around another animated project that would follow Bad Batch or another project that would spin off of it. But that's my my primary thing is that we know that this is the last season and for the last like four episodes or so, it really has felt like they don't know what they're doing to close it out. Like they're really dragging their feet on just the basics to get to the end. So, so and I think I do think then that there is a plan. I mean, the, the Asajj so. stuff and, and linking her with Omega and the, like you said, and I agree, they, they've been slow walking at least these past three, four episodes. And I don't think it's, they didn't have a plan. I think their plan is we're going to continue this story in another series. I hope so. Because yeah. like I said, I just, and I'm not talking shit against the creatives, just knowing where we're at in this season's story and what it's supposed to kind of resolve. I don't know how we get all those boxes checked outside of yeah. the boys get there and Omega gets free. I, we're we're going to yeah. get that in some variety, but what about all the other important narratives that do have an impact down the road like the, hey i don't know the yeah. clones themselves literally all the clones uh, wolf leaving and joining rex and gregor where's the time going to come for that now so mm -hmm. and like i this is you know rebels was in a similar spot where it's like okay well this is going to be the end of it and it's like and that's it but Stuck rebels it. last season was fucking Nailed amazing it. and this one feels almost like We'll just finish this up and we'll move on to the next one. I know. It, it almost feels like they're just like, just get it done and then we'll move on to the next one. And then the next one is where we will really start to, to bring things to a close. And that feels disappointing because obvi like obviously the reason that the show is coming to an end is because of viewership. Like you, you don't just end a series three seasons in because everything's going fucking the, exactly the way that you wanted it to. So it almost feels like this third season got to a point and then they were like, look, don't blow our load on shit that we know people aren't watching. Just get it to the end. And then we'll, we'll have this new thing coming out that we're going to get people hyped about. And then we'll really put some of the, the narrative points that people are interested in, in that. And that's that's really kind of how this last season, especially the last half of season three, has felt to me. Is that they're 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 saving the good shit for something. Yeah, I mean, else. honestly, I can't even I can't even shut that down really because even in our own fan base, the love and appreciation for Bad Batch is it's like there's there's polar opposite sides being represented. You have someone like. Like Bad or even myself, I, I think Bad Batch is a fantastic series. It, I've loved it since season one. Then you got someone like Lee where she's like, yeah, I'll maybe let the season play out and binge it. But all along, she's always been like, I've just never, never really gotten the Bad Batch craze. And as Nick said, I, I, I think that's uh, that probably is playing out across the fandom itself. Uh, I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we'll, we'll talk more when we kind of set up next week in, in, in the finale. But I, after this one, it's like, ee, I don't know if there's enough minutes left on the clock to, to kind of honor the story yeah. I thought Bad Batch was meant to tell, tell, which was the essentially the rise of the Empire and the fall of the clones. Yeah. And I mean, runtime wise, like you said, dude, if 21 minutes is the next, we're, we're probably looking at less than an hour of runtime left. Oh, a hundred. Oh, which is, which easily, is crazy, dude. Uh, like I said, I mean, it hasn't been revealed yet, but I would be, I'll be blown away if the finale comes in over 30 minutes and that worries me. It worries yeah. me, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got here? So going through some of the uh, kind of diving into the deep down, I, there were some top moments in here. And the first one I, I, I kind of latched onto, and and I really appreciate, again, how Omega has been portrayed this season. If anything, you can argue, I mean, her, her character growth from season one till now is very impressive. Even within mm -hmm. season, it feels like she's she's gained a few XP points if you're a gamer out there. So I really dug 
her game planning, how she just came into the vault and immediately started taking charge using her training from tech, hunter, crosshair, wrecker, and trying to figure out a way to get herself and everyone else out. I mean, in my review, I, I've identified her as a true galactic hero now. She's like any of our other Star Wars heroes where she motivates those with no hope. That is fucking special for a character. I mean, she she can motivate these kids. I mean, for Christ's sakes, we just saw one of the most disturbing things ever in this episode. I don't know if anyone else picked up on this. The Empire has children taking care of babies, for Christ's sakes. I mean, did that shock anyone else? That was one of my ha's. I'm like, this is this is a new low. A new low. This makes what Cad Bane did to little Bane here look look nice. Little Bairn. His new mommy is Sammy, who's probably 10. Yeah. It's just like, Christ. But then, you know, seeing her and using her skills, game planning. She already mapped out the entire facility and used their puzzle pieces to be like, all right, here we are. This is this. This is that. This is this. So I, I, I loved seeing Omega fully yeah. become this galactic hero that we've kind of seen her working to and one other thing while i'm looking at this nick did anyone else pick up on the clear focus on the circle imagery at tantus there's one shot where they come oh, in yeah. from atop the mountain you see the two yeah, circles and it goes right it. to the vault and it's circle circle, yeah. circle i'm like what what is the symbolism here Seven circles of hell. Okay, maybe. Th- there you go. That's where those people are. There you go. I'll maybe, take maybe. it. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Bat, yeah. Bat says nobody's mentioned. Yeah, yeah he's. This I says know, nobody's mentioned Echo. I, I get it because when I read the forums after I watch this, everyone was high on Echo. I just I don't understand that. I love Echo too, but he's he's always been a part of the Bad Batch. We we know what he's up to. He comes and goes, and it, yeah. It's like okay, he's back again. I mean, he's been popping in and yeah, out all season long. So yeah, I mean, like he, like re, like he was in what two or three episodes right. ago. He was in there when when they met up with with Rex. And and here's my thought on how they, like it's kind of weird, but like they just used Echo as a droid this episode. That, that's his like, thing, he man. Was just a yeah, droid. On, when like, he was on the batch, that was his, he was the he was the, the yeah. hacker alongside with Tech. Yeah. So you know, like. He, yeah, it was cool to see him, but it wasn't like it, it's been a while since we've seen him. And he also just like, it's not like he came in and he rocked the boat or did something super awesome. Like, it's kind of weird that they've just relegated him to the role of like, hey, plug into this fucking outlet and make it work. <laughs> <laughs> like He did have some that's, pretty that's slick moves does. getting himself up that droid pipe, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did like, I mean, but, uh, while we're talking about him, Bat, if you just had some patience, for Christ's sake. Uh, he makes my my next top moment getting the coordinates. I like I said earlier when I did my my yeah. brief recap here. I, I the the moment he and Hunter and them agree on the plan that hey you you should be the one that needs to smuggle on the ship, disable the proximity sensor so we can tail you, and then kind of leech onto your underbelly. It was I mean like I said that is that's the Star Wars tension that we all know and love. It's what we've been trained on. It, it's what makes us go woohoo Star Wars. So I, I I really appreciate that. I love that he came through right in the last second, and it, it only makes sense that Echo, a former member of the Bad Batch, is joining them en route to Tantus. It just it it all lined up perfectly. So uh, yeah, love love you, Echo. Good to see you. You had a kick ass suspense filled mission that you pulled off right at the last second but honestly nick that i think my favorite part of this moment was just the the clear will and determination on hunter's face where you could just feel like he, this guy was not going to allow them to fuck up again they fucked up so much and i think that helped kind of add suspense to this because we, we've been trained now like oh these guys just fuck this shit up he, they, they, they've screwed this up so much to find Tantus that he was just like, you know, Rampart, shut the hell up. He wasn't even waiting for Echo to give him the high sign. He just fucking punched it, flipped, and was yeah. hoping for the best. So I, um, I, I really enjoyed that, how this episode ended. And it, it, it ended on a perfect cliffhanger. I just wish we had episode 12 alongside this one. So this didn't feel like such a tease. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm very interested to see how the last two episodes go. Uh, I mean, it is concerning for sure about the runtime. 
of the next one. But yeah, if they do it well, then then you know maybe the you know at least the tune for how the back half of the season is going could change. Yeah, listen, I there's they can still do this. It can still be pulled off. I just think it's going to be very difficult if that final episode clocks in under thirty minutes. It's it's going to be going to be tough. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, hey, references and eggs. I literally. I didn't know what to do this week outside of going with a another lame one when uh, uh, Rampart is looking at the clones and essentially says, uh, "What do you say? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna stand out like overheated Gamorians." It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess there's that. He dropped the little green piggy guys from Jabba's palace, so that's yeah. that. All right. Some. Do you think that overheated Gamorians are like purple? Like, do you think their skin yeah, color changes because they're overheated? Like, what does he mean by it that? Was, was it a fat joke for Wrecker? I really don't know. I, yeah, I, I, don't I, know. I do not I don't know. know. How about Wrecker just fucking... At one point in time, I, I, I don't know if I upload the screenshot. He's literally... He looks like my, my daughter. He looks like my eight-year-old daughter lounging on his iPad. His yeah, he's just, yeah, he's yeah. just lounging on his iPad like, hey, guy, you guys need some help? Uh-huh. Cool. All right. No problem. I, I must not have included it in the stills, but it's a great shot. Of right. oh, is this it? Yeah, there he is. He's got his bucket on top of his head, and it looks like he's on his smartphone doom scrolling or on his iPad playing Roblox. So uh, you got to love the big guy there. All right, some ha moments just in case we didn't get to him. I talked about the kids taking care of babies as being a new low for the Empire. Yes, it sure is. I was like, man, I don't even know if I like looking at this, even though it's a cartoon. We got the Imperial Station 003 confirmed finally. Oh, some of uh, Rampart's lines. Like I did, I, I'm going to be releasing a, a short for my breakdown because I, I do give Rampart a lot of credit. I, I think he is the perfect Imperial. I mean, the lines he was dropping, the way he got in there and just slid right back into being a dickhead captain, it was amazing. You know, the one line, didn't make a device admiral on looks alone. You know, say yeah, that was you, you could feel. I think he might even said that he was he missed pl- being an imperial boss. It, did everyone notice he kept fixing his his insignia, you know, to make sure it was perfectly straight, like a good officer yeah. would. So he was fun, Doctor. He was, yeah, he was great. He was great. We uh, we got the name of this other scientist, or I guess a doctor here. The one that started questioning mm-hmm. Car, she actually looks like a, an, an Asian character. I guess is what they're going for. Remember one point, I was like, yeah. "Are these all clones?" Well, clearly they're not. We had Mustache Bro, yeah. right. so now there's like male guys showing up, and then we got Doctor Scalder here. Okay, mm-hmm. we've been talking about this for weeks now. When we when we've been looking at the the uh, episode title for the finale, the cavalry arrives. We've been like, oh, that's fucking so easy. It's the Bad Batch. Well, that's no longer going to be the case. The cavalry is arriving next week, very clearly. So I am now positioning that in a reverse move from when the Bad Batch was debuted in the Clone Wars, Rex is going to be the cavalry coming to assist the Bad Batch, just like they did to help Rex and them rescue Echo from the Techno Union. How do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Um, I think that given, yeah, given the fact that we're definitely going to see the the Batch on Tantus in the next episode, and we probably are going to need reinforcements here, that it, it, it is it is going to be Rex and, and wh- whoever he can scrounge together, I would imagine. Yeah, and, and y- you got to think the way they're positioning. And I think you and I even even said this. We're like, if, if Omega does get back in there, there, there's a good chance that she starts trying to break out on her own. She's already done it once. So as she told mm-hmm. the, the, the kids, like, don't, don't worry, I, I've done this before. I actually got two of us out. One was an adult. So I got it. So th- does she need the cavalry? Maybe not. I mean, the cavalry could be could yeah. be coming for the Clone Force ninety nine <laughs> to just help them get to the damn base. So, um, yeah, I, I found that I was like, there, there's no way the cavalry is Clone Force now. It, it's and I, it makes sense to me. It really will be as their series end, just like they ended the Clone Wars with their introduction. Rex is going to kind of come in and, and take their place. So I, I, I do appreciate yeah. that if it plays out that way. If it doesn't, it just goes to show you Nick is right and these writers are fucking stupid as shit. <laughs> and I can't write, but I think I have decent ideas. Sign us up, please. Yeah. And I, I will say that, you know, I was really 
convinced that we were going to get some sort of Emery turn, but these last couple, like it's coming. this episode it's didn't really, like, I, I hope it does because they're really waiting a long time. It, it, you know why I, I, I still feel that way, Nick? The, the fact that they're now showing there's contention among the science ranks means that yeah. even her colleagues are starting to pick up that she may be treating the vault differently than than most Everybody awful else. imperial yeah. scientists would. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's going to happen. I mean, every, every time she goes in, Omega is working her the fuck over. So that yeah. is going to happen, but probably not until the finale. All right. So I actually did some pre-work this week, Nick, and have the titles pulled up so we don't have to delay there the show. Go. So next week, a short one, Flash Strike. And... Like I said, I don't think this one's going to be hard to to speculate. In fact, if you go up on Star Wars Leaks right now, someone has compiled the leftover uh, trailer scenes, which 100% are all going to be from this episode. They, they, they weren't that dumb to include finale shot into that. And it is. It, it, we're, we're going to have an action-packed Vietnam-esque raid next week on the jungles of Tantus. I mean, the guys are going to come in, getting dropped off. They're going to be fighting TKs. It's going to be nutty. And uh, that that's what the, the, the flash strike is them showing up unannounced on Tantus. I have a feeling by the end of it, shit's not going to be going well for them. And uh, Omega and them, they, they're probably going to make progress on their breakout, but they are going to get foiled, therefore needing full resolution in the finale with Rex showing up with the Calvary. What say you? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about what I was expecting for sure. The flash strike angle of it, I wonder if it's going to be similar to Rogue One, like when they land on Scarif. Yeah, dude. It, it's a similar situation. It you know? doesn't even look like they land. It looks like they're at they least two perish. of them are, are, yeah, they're they're getting dropped out. They're hanging from cables and yeah, they're repelling into the forest as the ship is flying. So yeah, I, I think if anything, this, yeah, this episode is going to be super tense from an action standpoint. The runtime worries me. Yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see how they play it out because it's they they there are four of them. Like and it is four and, and of them. They versus, got they got to deal with Rampart unless they let him yeah. fly. I don't know if they trust him enough yet, but Yeah, cuz like, you know, do you leave Rampart on a ship? Do you like I guess, come, yeah, do you bring you, him do you, down and fucking tie him to a to a tree? That's the thing. Like, I mean, you, you know, if I'm like, "Oh, yeah, this is kind of fun with Rampart, but now you think about it, he he's just going to be like a baggage to them. So do they just let yeah. him go or lock like, him up? They, like he ain't, he ain't picking up a gun and shooting no, at TKs no. that for sure. So I, I, I wonder if he is like, like you said, is he fully bought in and he tries to infiltrate in a different, you know, he, manner. He, he's callous zero. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's the first version oh, of, yeah. <laughs> uh, of uh, what, what was it, what was the title? Uh, uh, fulcrum. Uh, well, fulcrum. Ahsoka fulcrum, used maybe. it first, and then I believe first, Callus yeah. took it over Callus once took, once she yeah. kind of started doing her her Jedi yeah. depression stuff. So yeah, I, I am curious to see how this goes because in my in my mind, the reason that I brought up Rogue One is like it's a similar situation oh, yeah. where you have a, a super small force going in, and they know that they can't just fully assault this base. So you're going to have to do shit around that like draws attention in multiple different places. You're going to have to try to get some of these Imperials yeah, that's out. That's why I said Vietnam, man. I mean, they're and, essentially going to be the yeah. VC. The, the Bad Batch, they're going to be the gorillas in there against the uh, uh, the Imperial forces. So I, I listen, I am yeah. super excited about this, about next week and the week after that. Hopefully that's coming across. Yeah. I, I'm just concerned with the lack of minutes left on the clock that they are going to stick the landing as cuz I don't want to get into like fan cannon shit cuz we all know head cannon is is dangerous too. Yeah. I, I just I feel like bad batch should be the vehicle to kind of end some of some of this era's narratives and and I hope it does. And and they're yeah. not yeah. like Nick was kind of speculating punted into the next franchise. And I just, it's just dangerous if you keep doing that, you know, like it's, we've already seen it done once. Like they, you know, like you essentially 
set up in season seven of Clone Wars, like, hey, we're punting some of this shit off to these guys to Bad Batch. Like, yeah, you'll get to the end of Clone Wars, but then like we're passing this baton off to the Bad Batch. And now Mm -hmm. they're going to pass it. That's actually a great point, dude. Uh, So, yeah, I I would not be surprised if on May the 4th we we get tickled with something here. Yeah, I, so, I don't know if they can wait all the way to Celebration Japan. I mean that that's still a year out, but I yeah. you that that you are right. I mean the Clone Wars, it was easy to end the the Clone Wars end with Order sixty six and the fall of the Republic. That's easy. As Nick said, Bad yeah. Batch was meant to start telling this, the rise of the Empire, and we're we're only maybe <laughs> a year or two in, and the show's yeah. ending. So how are we going to address the clone population? How are we going to address the name clones yeah. that? are nowhere to be seen during the original trilogy or rebels. Is there enough time to do so? I hope so, but I am, I'm still yeah. eagerly waiting to see what happens and excited. Cause as much as we may critique certain aspects of bad batch, I do appreciate the franchise. I've loved the stories it t- it's told. I loved how it's, it's given some life and fleshed out this rise of the empire and how horrific it was and, and how the, you know, the galaxy just immediately was kind of under the boot. But uh, it it is concerning to to not know that there to not know that there this could continue, and to know that we only have possibly thirty to forty minutes total time left. Yeah, and it's you have to wonder too <clears throat> how much more like how many more resources do they want to dedicate to this time period? Like, there's already a lot of content in here, and there's already a series that follows this one. Like there's already rebels. Well, not even that, Nick. It Kenobi and then Andor. Kenobi, yeah. I mean, yeah. Kenobi and Andor, right in the middle. So like, I don't know if if it's if it is a wise decision to just throw in another series in this same time period because it's been so heavily explored already. So I don't know. It is confusing to see or to to try to figure out what their plans are internally for what's after Bad Batch. Do they just say like, hey? You know, Bad Batch is over. This is the last thing that we're doing in this era. You can watch, you know, Andor season one and two, and then you can watch Kenobi season one and then go into Rebels. And then that's that is the the whole story of, you know, the the post order 66 era. And then you flow into the yeah, OT. I, I, I'm uh, with you, but I, I still think this era has to be the era to resolve all the clone shit and. I, yeah, don't I don't know if, gonna, if we can if make yeah, that I don't know if we can do that in 30 to 40 minutes or you know maybe if, if there is another series sure you could you could definitely get closer but yeah it, it, it's yeah it's because I mean, if you look at it if you look at Kenobi I mean we know from Kenobi that there are literally just like clones out on the street like banging Hanging out yeah because they're, they're homeless and it's so like and and I don't know if like even if they do choose to run with that that decision to do like an Asajj and Omega series like is that series going to be focused around clones? you know shit? what man you're right like, I the more I think about it if it does not get addressed in Bad Batch it's over they're just going to go with you know what the clones just disappeared get over it some some scattered yeah, like, you might come across some here in, in a rebel series or like Nick said panhandling but there's no, really no reason to tell the tale the Bad Batch did it it showed that the Empire replaced them with TKs that's that yeah, and that, I, I, I don't I, know if we're going to get that. I think that's where we're headed, man. I think that's where we're headed. And the thing, like the biggest thing is is what we've always been saying. It's like, it's Cody. It's it's like, it's the one guy. It's the guy. Yeah. Like, it's the only name clone from the movies. And we're just hey, like, you know what? at this point, we're assuming that it's I'm Clone I'm glad X, you, you, you brought we're... Clone X up. Does he show up in Flash Strike, you think? Or they save him He's for Cavalry? To. Like he he's got to right he he's got to be the one that like tries to address whatever's happening as soon as it happens because I don't think that he's like Clone X is not a leader of men like he's not no, he, like a he reports general. to Scorch but like yeah. TKs and them will listen to Clone X but Clone X is not yeah. tops like Scorch is above him no so yeah I I am interested to see how they approach this Clone X thing. Because if they don't address that, like that, that's a whole thread. Mm-hmm. 
That's, that's what I mean. Because it's not just that's him. That's what I mean, dude. There, there's a lot. <laughs> it's clone X, and then it's clone Y and Z and and, right. and, and B and all of them, because they're like, well, all the other ones aren't Correct. ready yet. You you have to do it. That's what I was saying. So, it, was like, it was like an evil Delta squad, and we, we've we've yeah. met one. He got taken out. Now we met the, the one that seems to be kind of the focus. Is it clone across there? Is it Cody brainwashed? Who knows? But I do think that stuff fans should get. I mean, we've talked about it since the the dawn of Bad Batch and even last season when he showed up. But Cody, he was the first fucking clone to ever be named. I mean, he is a dude. I know Rex became the dude because of the Clone Wars, but Cody's the only one... For all that dates all the way back to live action through yeah. through rot. So I, I do believe it. I know this sounds very entitled, but he is a clone that fans are owed an explanation as to what happened to him. Why would someone yeah. like Cody not link up with Rex Gregor Wolf? Why would he maybe not go out and try to find Kenobi like they were going to kind of put forward in the first Kenobi series? So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we can hit. The- I like this one from Clips Films Melbourne here, Nick. Wouldn't it be cool if someone let Zillow Beast clone escape on mm-hmm. Mount Tantus, destroying everything in the facility, and eat De- Doctor Hemlock? It's something. It's like something from Half Life. <laughs> like one from Half Life. Yeah. I would I wouldn't mind hilarious. that. It, that would actually. <laughs> I think it would work perfectly because that that's a call back to Bad Batch itself and all the way back to the Clone Wars. It's one of the first yeah. things Palpatine wanted to, wanted to start cloning even before he became Palpy Pal. Patine. So I would mm-hmm. I would not be opposed to that. And it would be a great way to, as Nick was saying, make your force look bigger than it is through distraction and chaos. Yeah. All right. Bat's still holding on to the Vader thing. I, I just it'd be awesome. I, I don't, I don't see. see how it's any point when, you know, these guys got their asses kicked by Asajj Ventress. So you don't need a Vader to to beat the bad batch. <laughs> Yeah, really. It's like you're you're really overkilling it if you're going for Vader. And I also like I don't know if if Vader would even be involved. Yeah, in this. I, I, like I, I like knowing how Palpatine is, he would not key even let Vader get close to sniffing Project Necromancer at this point in time. Yeah, there's no way. Because, I mean, Vader knew nothing about in the comics when he magically makes his way to Exegol and, and sees Palpatine's temple and all the machinations he's got going in there. So, uh, who knows? Listen, Bat, I would love to see the guy. He makes everything ten times better, but it, it, it is overkill at this point in time. The, the Bad Batch has had so many failures. Um, unless they're going against standard TKs or other clones, they not as special as I thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We'll like- leave it at that. Um. Oh. Oh. You. You keep that to yourself, Bat. I just told you exactly what's going to happen in very broad terms. But mark my <laughs> words. Our our speculations, our predictions will ring true, just like they do every week. Uh, all right, buddy. Well, real quick. Uh, I, I have been teasing the episode time lengths just to uh, reiterate. Uh, cryptic hd quality who has definitely uh, ha- had some good information leak in the past he clocked this week's in at 24 he's clocking 14 in at 22 no word yet on 15 fingers crossed for at least 35 plus notice how i keep increasing it each time <laughs> okay we'll see we will see well you know what people it's already that time for the fan segment woohoo talk about efficient star wars time show at its finest uh we 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 we, you know we kind of checked in with the fans early and i hope to keep doing that to open the show kind of go through the questions that you all have for us or at least the same people that ask and by no means my friends that keep asking we love it you're the only reason this segment is still alive but it would be great if we could get some other fresh blood in there so please ig please unshadow ban us or whatever you've you've done to anything we put out that only goes to 90 people please yeah i don't know maybe maybe we have to start putting it up on tiktok well i I, maybe there's more i am um, over there (laughs) fuck if i know yeah dude who knows i i've uh i've started adding the question to discord all right so there's a new questions channel in discord so if you're not in our discord remember it is open access we don't really give a shit. If you do something stupid, we'll just kick you out. No big deal. Uh, you can get that link on Instagram at Star Wars Time Show. Question is, 
the next week bring two episodes for a finale. Now, we're not getting two episodes. I just hope it's the length of two episodes. Oh, yeah. No, no. The, we uh, we know that we get one episode next yeah. week and we get one episode the week after that. And it's, it's definitely one they, and one. There's no, there's no secret. The only the and... only theory we can hold out hope on is that all other seasons, I believe, were 16, Nick. So maybe 15 does clock in double time. Double. That's double, why I'm saying yeah. 35 plus. 35 plus. Just keep putting it out there. Maybe it will happen. But anyways, other ways to get mixed up into the Star Wars Time Show live stream, which also gets poured to podcasts each week, is to get involved with our question of the week, which also gets posted to Instagram. I think it ends up on Twitter if I if I remember to check. And no, I'm not one of these people that's going to say X, formerly known as Twitter. It is what it is. It's either Twitter or it's X. I hate that shit. And I wish journalists would stop it. It's It's dumb. You just make Elon, you know, you make him look even stupider somehow by always having mm-hmm. to remind people what X used to be. Okay. It's so dumb. It's like stupid. Anyways, the other way is our top five, which may be changing at least my my uh, role in the top five. But as long as you're doing ad tag at Star Wars Time Show on Instagram with your Star Wars art of any kind... Nick's going to see him on Monday night, and he will go through and pick his five favorite. Feel free to use the Star Wars Time Show hashtag, just because why not? But hashtags are completely useless and broken on Instagram now. You can't sort nothing. Um, I'm not even going to mention the daily daily real features, because those may just want disappear one day, and I honestly think it might only upset about 10 to, 10 to 15 people, mm-hmm. and that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into the question of the week before we look at some of the immaculate art that Nick selected for us. Get rid of the browser screen there, click a few buttons in Slack, and we'll be ready to rock. All right, that's the wrong click. Hold on, let me try that again. And the right click. So we asked the fans, how are we feeling about Bad Batch so far? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take out Excellent. recent episode, just how are we feeling about the, about the season. Luckily, our diehards answered. No, I think we got one or two new replies, so that's neat. And JRO yeah. was our first Discord replier, so we'll make sure to hit that as well. All right, Nick, go ahead. Do yeah. your duty. Kicking off the question of the week this week is 2797 Studios. Always in those responses. We love to see it. Thank you, Bat. Uh, he says, still enjoying it. The tension is what this season is all about. I do think that these last two episodes could have been one. Smart man. Bat's with Smart us on man. that. Uh, would have been a nice cliffhanger leading into the final two episodes, but I'm looking forward to this coming to an end. As much as I love the Clone Wars era, it's time has ended. Let's hope they wrap it up effectively and put a nice bow on it. So even Bats, Bats like put this Clone War and, shit. And he to he's bed. like a clone <laughs> clone bro. Like he, he yeah, clones clone are his homies. So yeah. that's impressive. We we might have to pop his face up on. On the it angry is. old man, let's move on <laughs> era live stream. Yeah. There's a lot of content. There's a, there's a lot of content in this era. But Nick, and, remember and people people know. 2019, the Skywalker saga ended with the, with the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about? Maybe, maybe maybe in the movie world it ended, but everywhere else, this fucking Skywalker Ooh. thing has just I mean, been on life support, you could, and they won't pull the plug. You could argue. The TV shows are, are they're still movies, and we still have Skywalker Saga, even into the Mandoverse, Ahsoka, you name it. Can't get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Next up, League of Extraordinary Sixthers. She says, uh, normally with BB, I would have waited to binge the entire thing, but I wanted to engage with the <laughs> Sorry, folks here. League. So it seems. <laughs> It seems I was right to just uh-huh. wait. I find it so frustrating the short run times and the lack of conclusions. Yeah, man, uh, League, you're you're one hundred percent right on there. I mean, I I think that there are series that benefit from uh, like individual episode releases, and I think that those series that benefit from that typically have a little bit of a longer runtime. Um, but yeah, I I do feel like this this should have been a drop the whole thing and just watch it, and and you know, I it would have D- Disney binged anything better. yet. No, Disney Disney doesn't do um, yeah, they're, full, honestly, full series releases. Honestly, Netflix is really the only one that still binges, right? Yeah. It's like Netflix and then 
prime prime sometimes like prime yeah, they'll give you like it, the like first prime. two or three to kind of hook you and then they slow drip it yeah because like some of prime like wheel of time on prime and rings of power on prime were episodic mm-hmm. releases but then mr and mrs smith and fallout are they're all oh, here no shit. All like right. i just I don't get there. I don't. I don't understand. Well, well their maybe it's because Amazon pay. is screwing us all now, and has not only raised Prime prices, but now we still have to watch ads unless you want to pay more money on Prime. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm taking that ad-supported one for sure. But yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't understand why. I mean, from a business standpoint, all of them should do weekly releases. Hell yeah. Nobody <laughs> keep, should keep drop subs. <laughs> Yeah, like no, like even Netflix shouldn't do. Full, well, you, you, you full notice drops. they've been almost they've been doing kind of like half season drops now. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know. Like from just from a purely business standpoint, it makes more sense to do it that way. But yeah, I, I agree with you, League. That I I do feel like this series would have been more satisfying to watch if it was all available to watch at your own pace. But I don't feel like that is the case for every well it's just, it's like i said i mean there's it depends when you grew up but i mean every week i'd watch a, a 30 minute tv show and have to wait until the next week to see kind of what's what's going down uh, yeah I, listen yeah, I'm, so. i i agree i i think if if bad batch was watched in one sitting kind of like the reviewers remember there's a reason the reviewers are coming out like holy shit this is like it just flows right into this and boom bang boom bang because they 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 watched the first eight in a row, yeah. and then the, the the next six. The only one they haven't seen is the finale. Yeah, and I mean, like, even in this instance, it could have been beneficial just to say, like, "Hey, I'm watching two, and then I'm waiting, and then I'm watching." It's it's all like with full drops. It's all about self control. <laughs> like, like, hey, bud, if you want it to last six weeks, then make it last six weeks. You don't have to fucking plant your ass down on the yeah. couch and watch all sixteen episodes. It's of the old spoiler <laughs> thing, though. If you're good, if you're like you and you can stay off of, yeah. of the internet, then yeah, go for it. But it, it's just if you're someone like me, where it just kind of pops up in your face. It, 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 this is a hard landscape to navigate these days. If you don't want to kind of as league saying down here, get get spoiled on something important. All right, go ahead yeah. and hit Bango. What was Bango? All got? right, Bango. Bango says, I like this episode much more than last week's. It's, it's retroactively made yeah, Rampart, that, the Rampart that's, thing somewhat that's less kind annoying. That's what we were saying early on. Yeah. Yeah. Thought they did a decent enough job with playing with tension mm-hmm. in a few different scenes. Should definitely have been longer or tacked on to last week's episode. I really hope the final two episodes are longer because there is a lot of shit left to cover. Well, Bango, <laughs> as we've said many times before... The next yeah. episode is shorter than this Drop one, those so. expectations to you. Hope the last episode is a bit longer. Yeah, so that ain't happening. Uh, next up, we got Johnny Osage Avenue. He says, we have two episodes left. Yeah, this episode perhaps should have been a double. Seems like we're going to pack 10 pounds of shit in a one pound <laughs> bag. Come on, Dave. <laughs> uh, Johnny, Johnny is man. the fucking Johnny. best. I, I, he needs to start Johnny. writing for us, I think. Yeah, Johnny is. Yeah, like, fucking, like I, I don't know it. how much people know about the, the behind the scenes of, of Stern. I mean, he is a funny guy, but a lot of times he is he's fed lines, like yeah. he's literally, like a screen's there, and just people. Like he's got like a prompt. Yeah, the, the, the writers in the back yeah. will be listening to what's happening. And they'll just start writing lines, and he he'll read the ones that he thinks going to be funny or not. That that's kind of what we need. Yeah, I mean, on, and, and for those of you who are new to the show and may have missed when we were doing. <laughs> interviews johnny has a has a dedicated episode where he was on oh, yeah. with us and discussed his his toy Back photography the, uh, career and star wars in general the interview so. days when we first kind of started yeah. doing streaming and th- those have all died yeah. and that that's all right i they yeah. were fun i mean i i think pretty decent at interviewing people but it did the anxiety sometimes would just it was also a lot of work to just get those set yeah. up and that was when spencer was right. doing a lot of the sourcing of the interviews for us at baron's black series out there so yeah, it is. It, he it's, still it's tries. Like I, I can't fault Spencer. It. It, it's mostly us pushing back. I think at this point. Yeah, and it's all. It's all, It's like it's a lot of logistics to do it, and then you we, know 
obviously it's fantastic we got to talk to some incredible awesome people. stuff but in the end like anything we touch it, it went nowhere i mean we we it was like what a year or two ago all this old shit from gallard blew up and it was all on yeah, our like show first stole. but then theory got it you know got nick on his show and yeah. kind of dominated Dude, it and, like some show literally stole our interview right. blurred us yeah. out of the video that we were interviewing uh-huh. nick gallard on and just had nick up and it was crazy yep. <laughs> like, and, and that channel's so massive dumb. now by the way massive yeah. like I, i'm so. pretty sure the dude already has his gold youtube plaque for you know a hundred thousand subs or whatnot <sighs> oh well <Whatever>. hey <laughs> such is life with the swts bros see we don't yeah. just we don't just bitch and moan for a reason there there's been like some shit that's went down we're just like what the fuck People like literally literally stealing we, our content and blurring we, us out of our own we videos. did this first we did all this nick gillard <laughs> stuff first but no all right yeah, whatever we okay all right next up mando pirate says it started off really good we got good plot motion out of the ventress episode but since then it's been a little underwhelming i hope they hit us with something special in these last two episodes uh, and then League responds and says, "100% after Ventress, it's been so mad." Boom! Can't here can't comes argue. a fantastic uh, candle, by the way. I am not a committee. <laughs> I love that. Man. <laughs> I love that one, dude. Uh, he just puts three one hundred, so it looks like I am not All a right. committee. He's been a fan of Dad Batch, and then. The new Republican says, I, I was hoping old man Sheev would make a more frequent appearance than a guest yeah, star. Yeah, you know, I kind of figured he was one and done. Like, he, that yeah. guy is never going to be a major character in anything but the, yeah. the small bursts we got in the films. Yeah, I mean, like, even in the films, he wasn't, like, more than a guest star, I would say. You know, like, the present, I feel like, after episode two, like just kind of like you knew he was around and then specific or not episode two, episode five. And then in episode six, it just felt like he was always there, even though you, you just saw him a few times. Like if you add up Palpatine screen time across the OT, it was very minimal. And even in the prequel trilogy, he wasn't like in a lot of scenes. It's just his presence was felt way more than he was actually on screen. Um, so yeah, good stuff there. Nice to see some new commenters oh, we got one more uh, popping in. Coming from Discord. And then, oh it's, yeah, it's, we it's got its JRO own, oh, from the Discord. Oh, sorry, JRO. It's its own screen. There you go. It's up. JRO says, Bad Batch has been fucking wizard. wizard Annie. Ever, uh, uh, even the more slow episodes have been pretty great. Can't there wait to see There's how this season ends. Positivity, finally. Thank you, JRO. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's how you, JRO's yeah, in We on. like he JRO for a reason. Also, because he gave He's me good. finger training techniques that I still can't get yeah, my ring go. finger to move properly. All right, so those are our um, question to the fan segment. Now we make our transition back over to the top five Star Wars fan artists of the week, running four eight to what four fifteen something like that tax day. Four eight to four fifteen. Ooh, yeah. Everyone get their taxes right, in, David. hopefully. Got my Yay. taxes in under the wire. Yeah, we I think Heather filed Sunday night. So. <laughs> Dude, me and Taylor were sitting there like for like two months. We're like, man, we should really file our taxes. And they were like, ah, we'll listen, like, <laughs> I think that's a sign of a. It, it's kind of a good thing because you know when when you're growing up and young, filing your taxes, like I, I got to get some of that money back. Where I'm finding like as well, I've dude, gotten older, it's or are you guys paying? For me, because up until last year, for four years, I was fully freelance. I was always paying, okay. and I was paying a yeah, lot. Yeah, because you you probably like weren't f- having anything taken out, right? So no, yeah, because like I was all ten ninety nine, so I would just send money every month to the there IRS. Like Smart. here's two thousand, here's fifteen hundred, whatever. Cut it down. But my first year of freelance, I didn't realize <laughs> that I should have been doing that. <laughs> And like, look, I, I made a lot of money, but I owed twenty thousand. Oh my god! <laughs> like, what the like fuck, I owed 20, dude? I owed twenty grand to the IRS. The first, my first full year of freelancing was twenty grand, and then after that, I realized, like, okay, I get my invoices in, and then I just send money <laughs> yeah, take, to the IRS. Take every thirty percent right off the top, man. Yeah, I just started doing that, man. So like, well, hey, I tell you what, it's impressive so, you were able to pay that fucking bill without taking on more debt. So good, good for I, you. I, I am good at saving okay. money. Like I, 
like that's one thing that I'm good at is saving money. So like when when the bill came down, I was like, oh, oh. Shit. but I still was All able right. to pay it. That's so, fucking impressive, man. That's and like, I, I guess that yeah. speaks volumes for not becoming a collector of hot toys or anything <laughs> Star Wars. Because yeah. that is one thing is I don't have oh. a regular monthly oh. expenditure like that. that. Oh man, you're just you're hurting my soul right now. It's just like oh my god, like because. I'm pretty sure these days my I I I'm, I'm embarrassed to even admit this. I I think my running monthly bill from Sideshow now with all the you know layaway shit I have is five hundred bucks. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I don't have anything. That's like that. I don't have anything disgusting. Like, like even my insurance, I just pay the uh, whole like my car my my car insurance. I just pay the whole six months up front. Well, I'm like, hey, I don't want to have you to better, deal you with better this be shit. quiet. Your 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 house is about to get fucking <laughs> raided. Calm down over there, dude. <laughs> I don't look. Like, I'm telling you, like I like I don't have a lot of cash or but like I just have money saved. <sighs> In case of emergency, ah, and luckily that has that has helped me. But this is the first time in four years that I've actually got yeah, money go. back from the IRS. So. so hey, congratulations on your bad financial year, Nate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, real yeah. quick, I want to. <clears throat> ah, damn it! Address this from Mando Pirate. The boys need a Thunderdome along with Connor and Seth from. I BD. wish we yeah, could. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, wish we I could. would love to be Pat McAfee, Howard Stern. That obviously that would be a dream. Yeah, I mean, a Thunderdome, getting people calling in, standing up, walking around. That's exactly how I'd like to do this show. But sadly, unlike yeah. Pat, we have not taken off on YouTube, and I do not think we're signing deals with Disney anytime soon. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Oh. Like you guys, like League saying here. Meanwhile, I cry when I put my deposit God on the Ahsoka damn, two point. I need Dude, to get in like, that ads or whatever the fuck Nick does. Holy shit! No, it's not. It's not even like I don't even make that much money. Like I make like a very average salary for where I am in my career. You really do just live it's a just, solid dink life, I, huh? I just don't buy a lot of shit. Like I, I truly That's don't. Amazing. Like my. Do you guys go out to eat like, and shit then, or do you just like sit at home and no, make peanut butter and jellies? At, dude, we cook at home five days a okay. week. We order in twice a week. But that's the thing is like me and Taylor like cooking together. Right. Like we, we work like we are both in the kitchen at the Check same time, prepping and, and cooking and shit. And like, so we don't spend a ton of money like eating out. We like this year. We really don't have that many vacations planned. Like our only vacations for this year are actually going to be next month in May, and it's back to back. Like I'm going to be out from May 15th to May 24th because we have two weddings that are out of the country, back to back. And then after that, we're right, just we, that we need like to get planning just, then because I'm I'm <laughs> out for two weeks at the end of May, leading into June. So, okay. like I said, we're, we're probably going to have to. To, to put a show in the in the can just do a recording. Yeah, I may only. have to, to, to do Holy a yeah, this is, this is a new there. segment. Yeah. Nick's Nick's life. It's new 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 fan yeah, segment. Like, talent, it's like, but that's the thing. Is like t even Taylor. Like Taylor has a lot more monthly expenditures than yeah. me. And like I just I don't have I don't have that like regular like oh I gotta this is my whatever per month or this is my whatever I don't oh, have man. that. Like, yeah, I probably I mean I obviously yeah. don't eat out during the week, but. I'd say once the weekend hits with the family, we do at least, at least three meals out or takeout. I mean, I, yeah, I have we, to eat we, Chipotle at least <laughs> once a week. It, it's it's a must. Yeah. I mean, that stuff is life to me. Yeah, I think we do. We usually do like twice. We'll do like Saturday meal and a Sunday meal that we order yeah. in or something like that. But after that, it's like, that's it. That's all we all do. All right. Well, because and, we're we're on a tangent about nothing, we're gonna fuck up our seven o'clock bonus, yeah, Nick. So, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna roll into oh, I, this. The top I found five. this shit fascinating, Nick. Not yeah, paying that, taxes, yeah, like, got like twenty k just in his back pocket. Here you go, that, fuck dude, it. Dude, that hit me so hard. I would have thrown I up. Like, oh I've been like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. It, what, when I first saw it, I like I freaked out. I was like, I must have put in something wrong. And then I realized, yeah, like, I was like, oh yeah, he's like tapping on the envelope. No, this is, this, there's one too many zeros, right? This is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it like hey, ten ninety nine. That's fucking impressive. You don't get man. taxes taken out, baby. You that gotta, is motivational. You like, I almost want to just stop collecting today, and and see how Dude. many more thousands I can add to my bankroll. Jesus, good for you. All right, Dude, go ahead, Nick. Kick us into the top five.
All right, kicking off the top five for this week, it is at Tong Wars, and it feels like Tong every time Tong Wars tags us, which I think he tags us for all of his shots, but he he's just I, I know or for most of his shots. I don't remember seeing this one? I'm glad you found it. <laughs> yeah, but anytime Tong puts out something, it's just of the yes. highest quality that you can get out of Lego photography. I don't think that there's anybody better than him that that really gets it. And I mean, we, we know others, Ray and there, you know, a lot of other, uh, Lego photographers, but Tong really kills it. And he gives us an awesome shot of, this is like CIS era. This is, you know, like prequel era Republic, uh, like big ass Republic vehicles out there with the troop transports flying over them. Tong always has the amazing environmental shots because of where, where he lives and yeah, I mean, we see three big proto ATATs um, with the big with the uh, troop transports flying over them. Awesome uh, sunset shot with these dark clouds and the reflection off of this water. Just top notch stuff from Tong Wars. Yeah, you are right. They are technically all terrain tactical enforcers. Okay, but they are also commonly referred to as Galactic Republic walkers. So. Yeah, go. it's awesome. It, it's a it's a killer scene, reflection, sun, all the uh, you, you know you you got those gunships up there in the background with those walkers. It's it's wonderful. Tong, one hundred percent, one of my favorite Lego artists. Even and I know you're not going to see them because they don't tag, but Brick Panda's back on a Star Wars kick. And as nice, always, it's nice. like yeah, okay, yeah, that's fucking beautiful. I mean, it looks like something from a Lego TV show. So yeah, Tong Wars. Brick Panda, Macro Brick, off the top of my head, those are those are the Lego accounts to follow. Lego Inspire is another one that usually interacts with us. Yeah. And then there was the one, it was 03071. It was all numbers. And I think the person's name was Ray, R E I. They were always oh, yeah. pretty solid yeah, at, the, they, at the Lego photography too. as well. All right. Yeah. So uh, good stuff there at Tong Wars on Ooh, Instagram. Someone's on Next a kick up. here. I can see already. It's another one. Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing for the first time in forever, I didn't even put out a post for this week's top five. I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't do it when I usually do it. And I'm trying to not panic about that shit anymore. So last night around 10, when I remembered, I, I usually would have been like dropped everything I'm doing ah. and then go do that. Yeah. I'm like, who cares? Again, 20 people hey, are going to see it. Who gives a shit, Matt? It's okay. That's It's okay. Uh, next up, we got Mr. Toy Lord and Mr. Toy Lord, again, with the Lego photography. I mean, honestly, this is just an awesome <laughs> shot from ESB. It's like you're you're seeing little Lego Luke Skywalker, you know, Hoth pilot Luke, looking up at this big ATST lightsaber drawn, getting ready to pull off his famous repel and blow up maneuver on this ATST. You see his fallen uh, Hoth trooper friends all around him. Um, and yeah, man, this is just an awesome like scale shot, like seeing the little Luke next to the big ATST on Hoth. Just an awesome Lego shot here from Mr. Toy Lord. Yeah, it's, it's it's kick butt. If you know this account, this is a. It seems there's another character we've we featured here. It goes by the name of Mr. Stormtrooper Davis. Same person. Mm-hmm. They've just yes. spun off and okay, created gotcha. a Lego only account. Uh, and they're always good at mixing practical with with digital. So pretty much everything in this shot is practical outside of the sky. That's coming from a computer screen. So, yeah, awesome stuff here from the, not the mister, but Mr. Toy Lord. Mm-hmm. All one word. Kudos to you. No periods, no underscores. Love it. Good stuff. Next up, we got Galactic Photography 66, ah. and he's given us an awesome shot Scene here. Scene recreation. Of, yeah, I was going to say, like, this is what, like, I remember, yeah, this, I remember seeing this and I was like, it was, okay, it was Rebel. I was like, it was anime. What was anime? Okay, Rebels. Um, scene recreation from Rebels, Vader on top of the uh, TIE Advanced. <laughs> so cool. Uh, lightsaber ignited. It just looks so sick, man. Like seeing Vader on top of this TIE Advanced, like even getting the red lightsaber hue on the, uh, on the, the ship itself. Just really awesome photography work here from Galactic. Yeah, I, I believe 66. it's the episode where I think he he 
shows up like this to and first confronts Ezra in Canaan, but then this is the one he fights okay. Ahsoka, I believe. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. it's like a spot on recreation. It looks great. Uh, Galactic, I believe, shoots in the three seven five scale, which is always more impressive when they actually look like real characters and, and ships. Nice little light effect there on on the tie advance, and of course Vader saber lit up. So great work here from Galactic Photography sixty sixty six over on <laughs> Instagram. That's right. Oh, look Next up. Is. We got our good friend Sir Dot Dork here, Jared. Uh, the the just like the nicest dude in toy photography, it seems like. And this shot here is setting up a challenge. It's setting up the Sir Dork Big and Small Challenge for April. Um, and what we see is a shot of father and son, of Din and Din, as some people like to call them now, of Jaren and Grogu. But it is it's 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 Mando and Grogu sitting there. Uh, just on, like a night next to a nice peaceful stream on the grass, just just enjoying the galaxy in a non chaotic state for once in a while, um, and it is it's just a it's just a nice peaceful shot here of father and son from Sir Dork. Yeah, and this is Jared stepping a bit out of his his typical scale. He's he's going up here to the one six scale. Hopefully he doesn't get the bug like some of the rest of us because it, it is a bank account destroyer as we just reveal. Save your money, Jared. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck. I really like hearing that from Nick. I just, I, I honestly hate myself right now. Like That, that was, I've always known, we've talked about before, like I, I just, I look at my glass and it's a car. Like there's enough toys in there. I could have paid cash for a fucking vehicle. Fuck. Yeah, man. So yeah, it, it, dude, <laughs> Sir Dork is the man. I mean- there, there. His account was blasted, I think, a year or so ago. Already back up to thirty-two-eight, killing it on YouTube. Although I, I kind of want to tune into his live stream, where he features a hundred toy shots. I want to see like if his brain starts to melt by the end of that, or, or yeah, how man, long he takes crazy. going over every shot. Because I think I would die. If I yeah, if he did, if he did it like we do, where it takes yeah, us ten minutes to go through five yeah, shots, that, that's a <laughs> it marathon, would be a long show. I'm gonna say you, you and I, we're we're lucky if we could even do eight before we both passed out. So I kudos know, to that. I Tune know. in though; he's over there on the Sir Dork YouTube channel, Sir Dork on support. Instagram. Great dude. That's right. Always Ooh, support the Dork. One. You can. It is. It's a clicky for the last one. It's a clicky for the last one here. Um, and this is from at starbat dot toy photography, and it's another shot of our good Mando friend Din Dejarin. Um, and this is this is such a cool shot because the way that Starbat was able to capture that twin sons of Tatooine in the background really, for me, makes this shot special. Like having the the sand dunes of Tatooine, having Mando as the sole focus of this shot. And then having those two twin sons in the background with that really nice golden hour kind of light coming through really makes this shot pop. And really uh, those colors, those those deep orange colors really brings the shot to life. Oh, yeah. There, there's some crazy contrast going on in this shot from, from Star Bat, another quality one. This is that Black Series Din that just is badass looking. I mean, they made 800 Din Dijarin Black Series figures until this one showed up and, and this is the definitive wow. for what, from what I've been hearing from people that still collect uh 112 you know Starbat's new now I do feel bad that we did that I didn't send out the graphic to honor him so <laughs> so maybe when I let everyone know that the the, the podcast is on podcast blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Platform. There, there we yeah. go. You, you something <laughs> what the hell blah, we're blah, even blah, ending blah, early blah, my brain's blah, already blah. starting to short out They'll they'll be recognized in some capacity tomorrow. There we go. Fuck it. Star Starbat dot toy photography Instagram. Someone help me. That's right. That is right. Starbat dot toy photography on IG new account. Make sure to follow if you hear it here. Some good stuff on their feed. Uh, but that's the end of the top five, and that's the end of our show for this week. So Matt, why don't you go ahead and close hey, us out? We hit it, man. I even I I was I was hesitant to even talk about it before we went live because it always jinx us, but we did. We we kept it right till about seven o'clock, which 
I think it's a, a good time, especially for a short episode like that and, and light Star Wars news in general. So once again, we love the fans that join us on the live stream and those of you that may be listening on the podcast platforms. We know you're out there. We see the hundreds of downloads. We'd love you to interact. You can interact with us through our socials. Best way to find those is over on StarWarsTime.net or just send us a message through the site. Okay support at starwarstime.net let us know how you found us why you stuck with us or if you just started listening why you're already considering giving us up just don't forget about starwarstime.net like i said not only can you get to our socials but you can also find all the podcast platforms we are on because this lovely little live always gets ported to podcasts one day later so if if you don't want to look at our stupid faces every week you can listen to our dumb mouths via spotify itunes pandora stitcher there's so many it's insane also over on starwarstime.net you never know if you're not subscribed to YouTube, we've got a handy dandy little button you can push over there that'll do it for you. If you are listening live right now, we appreciate your time, attention, interactions through the live stream. Keep it up. Keep spreading the good word here because we know and we know you know. We just need you to make other people know that there's always time for Star Wars time. And more importantly, if you listen to the Star Wars time show, The Force will be with you always.